Thanks for joining us again on the AFL Europe podcast and another segment of the Irish Down Under series. This week, fresh off a round seven win over Geelong, we are very, very privileged to be joined by Grace and Neve Kelly from the West Coast Eagles. Girls, thanks very much for your time today. Thanks very much for having us on. Thank you. It's, uh, as I said before we started, it's great to have you guys cheery after another win and, and a, a big win over the Cats. And you guys were just both sensational. So congratulations. How's it all feeling? Two rounds to go in the season. I bet it's flown past so far. Yeah, it's great. We were just saying there today after we won, we were well, we were absolutely thrilled. But we we're like, we've two more games. Let's try and get another another one anyway. <laughs> so um, yeah, we we absolutely loved getting the win, and it just we've put in so much work, and all the girls have, and it's great to get that reward for effort. So um, yeah, we're we're thrilled. It was the first win for the three Irish girls together this year, guys. Obviously, you had the win already, and Ash missed that due to injury. So the three beyond the pitch today, hugely influential week on week. The, the, the influence the Irish girls are having is phenomenal. All of you amongst the best on ground. Goals galore. Um, how are you finding all playing together, and, and what, do you, what do you think is the synergy that you're all linking up so well and playing so well together at the moment? Yeah, it's really good that there's three of us here this year and that Ash has joined over from Bulldogs. So um, it's really good the three of us are living in the house together here. So it's really good, like even just, you can bring that little bit of Gaelic style onto the field. Um, like we kind of linked up a little bit with handballs and stuff, what we bring probably from Gaelic football onto the field. So it's it's really good having another Irish person over and Ash has just slotted in really well. Um, and as you said, it was her first win with us today. So um, she was out with a, a knee injury there, but she's she's fine again. And it was great for her to get the first one with the Eagles today. So, um, yeah, it's it's great to have the three of us um, and to celebrate here in the house together. Having not known, uh, Mike is in a completely different boat to me on this, but having not known your story overly too well until this this year, what's been the the secret to you? I guess every week you seem to be improving and getting better as a as a collective, but also individually. How's that sort of come about? Is there particular things that you're focusing on or is it just feeling a little bit more settled, you know, towards the back end of your second season and understanding more about the game? I think it's, yeah, the second, it's understanding more about the game and we're getting more settled and getting used to everyone on the pitch as well. Um, had a hard enough draw as well. We were playing against the big top teams at the start of the season. So, um, yeah, we're. I think by round five, round six, we kind of got our mojo a little bit and um, just getting to know each other more. And Pradley's coach as well, his his brand of footy is, it suits us and suits um, our running game. So we're just living by that and trying to implement that as much as we can each game. Yeah, and I think um, what Grace said there as well, I think we're building a lot on last year. I think last year, because we were an inaugural team, um, I think it was all about kind of building good friendships and relationships in, in the club. And, um, you know, I think we came away with one win last year. So I suppose we're just kind of building on that. And it's good to, to be up against the good teams. But um, it was good to get a win, uh, our second win again today. Girls, I was just going to touch on that. Like, obviously, it's the second season for the Eagles. You were involved from the start as foundation and formation players What's it like to come in at the start of a journey uh, as part of that group and build on it from the very beginning right up through your first season into your second season, getting those few wins? Um, how exciting has that journey been from the start until now and to be involved at that level? Yeah, it's been great. Um, there's such a good culture within our club. Um, like all the girls, no matter if we win or lose, it's there's always such a really good team environment and we always learn from each game. Uh, no matter what so um, we're really enjoying it this year in particular as well just because we're more familiar with it and with the girls as well so um, yeah it's just we've been enjoying every game taking our learnings from them and um, enjoying the training sessions as well. Take us back to I guess for people that are footy mad they would know that the Amazon documentary Making Their Mark has just sort of come to the airwaves uh, this last week sorry um, a big feature of that is the West Coast facilities and, and you know what you guys have walked into over there and West Coast being one of the powerhouse clubs on and off the field in, in the men's and hopefully not too far away in the women's. What's it been like walking into that sort of environment uh, from where you've come from and how's, how's that been? This looks incredible. 
Yeah, it's, it's been incredible. Um, I suppose when we first walked into the club last year, like we couldn't get over. We were mind blown by the facilities. Like um, they're top class and they're they're brand new as well. So they used to be set up in Subiaco, but they've now set up a new uh, training facility in Lats Lane, and it's incredible. Like um, all the men are in there training as well, and um, there's a really good unity like between the men's and the women's teams. So like you know, the, the, a lot of the men would come up chatting to the women like in the club and stuff like that, which is really nice. So um, it comes from the top. There's a really good culture in the club. Um, everyone gets on with everyone and everyone's really approachable. So, yeah, coming into the the facilities last year, we were just mind blown, to be honest. Um, yeah. The facilities are top class. The, the training staff are really good and there's so many as well. So, um, yeah, we're just, we're very lucky to be part of West Coast and their club. And to add on to that, I suppose as well, and it's one of the things that people are interested here at home from the professional side of things, is all that support staff you mentioned and the likes of the the physios, the medical, all that support. You guys have both had your injuries, obviously, great at the end of last season with your knee, Neve more recently with your finger. We see it with some of the other girls, uh, Cora, Breed Stack, Anya Tai, and the common theme that comes back from all of them is the absolute brilliant support there is there in terms of medical uh, injuries, rehab, all of that sort of thing. Obviously, um, you've experienced that. How do you find that and, and how does that compare to, to back home? Oh, it's huge. Um, like when I done my knee last year, it was actually our last round um, before I came home and they were on top of it straight away. Uh, they wanted me to get my surgery done here before I went back home and they got in touch with my physios back home as well. So there was a great rapport between the physios at home and physios here. Um, they were always constantly going over and back. So even when I was home in Ireland, they were looking after me um, and they knew every step of my rehab plan and everything like that. So they have the utmost fair, uh, care for both of us, even Neve's injury as well. She was back in three weeks. So um, yeah, every day they're checking in and just that little 1% each day, like how to improve. Um, so yeah, they're they're top class. You did get back a bit earlier than planned, I assume, from your injury. That picture is going to be on Google for a long time. I don't think everyone can see it again <laughs> of your finger injury. But um, obviously, it was great to get back so quick from that, from what looked like an absolutely horrific injury and a freak accident by the looks of it. Was it? Uh, yeah, it was a bit. Of, it was actually a wet day. We were against Fremantle and. I went up to catch a ball and my finger just went back. But like initially when I looked down, I just thought it was um, it was a dislocation. And I was like, oh, that'll be grand to just pop it back. But it was kind of when I turned around, there was like a huge laceration on the finger. So yeah, I was a little bit freaked out to see, to see the bone out. But um, <laughs> it, uh, to be honest, uh, the, as Grace said, like all the staff were incredible. Like um, I was meeting the OT nearly every second day. Um, and I was wrecking his head probably trying to rush back as early as I could. But um, like the, the staff were incredible, like the doctors, the physios, the OT um, and then the strength and conditioning coaches and all that were just giving me even exercise and stuff like that. And just anything to keep me ticking over. I was doing running and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I probably I did think I would be out a lot longer. Um, so um, I got a good playing splint and yeah, I was I was back then for um I missed two games and then I was back then after three weeks. Going back a little bit further, um, you had some time with the West Clare Waves and played some tournaments with them, I'm led to believe. How was your experience playing in Ireland and how much did that help sort of knowing just the basics of what to expect when you got out to Australia? Yeah, we enjoyed it so much, actually. Um, it was, um, I think it was seven aside that we played um, with West Clare Waves. Um, and it was a tournament that we played up in Dublin. So, yeah, we had so much fun at that. Um, we didn't know what, what we were doing at the start. We flew. <laughs> um, and we got tackled straight away and we were like, ref, where's our freight? We were we didn't have a clue what was going on. But, um, yeah, you do get stuck into it. And we, we knew from that um, experience that day that it was definitely something we wanted to pursue more and uh, learn more about. So we're delighted that we went and... Um, played with West Clare and here we are <laughs> guys I think I think I might have been the rest you're talking about that day and I remember <laughs> um, fairly well actually but one of the things that strikes me is that physicality of the game and your kind of initial reaction to Jesus what's going on here like in terms of the physicality and the tackling but uh, you definitely <laughs> adopted 
to it very quickly anyway, and there's no issues there. But would you say that uh, the physicality is one of the most difficult parts of the games to just get used to coming from a football background over to AFLW and, and the tackle and, and that those aspects of the game? Yeah, definitely. I think the physicality was probably the biggest difference and then the oval shape ball. Um, but yeah, I remember like our first training session getting an absolute wallop off one of the girls. And um, I think you need to get that first, uh, you know, shock really yeah. to the system and then you kind of get used to it um, and learn from it. So um, that's an aspect of the game that I actually love now. I love the bit of physicality too, too. So we'll probably have to tame it back now when we come back for Gaelic. <laughs> yeah, you learn to dispose the ball quicker um, when you know that there's a tackle coming as well. So um yeah, you kind of learn to kind of move the ball quicker as well. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so you adapt to whatever throws at you. I'm assuming that there would be a fair, uh, you know, your first game with West Clare, you said you got that shock. I'm assuming your first game at AFLW, you would have been shocked again at just how much, I'm guessing how much quicker it was and how much sort of more physical some of those girls are, you know, opposition clubs when they're playing for, for professional points, I guess. Yeah, and I think when, especially last year, when you don't really know the rules of the game as well, you're kind of more hesitant, um, probably going into tackles and going in, like, where do I go kind of thing. But um, the more confidence that you get with each game definitely helps. And the more knowledge that you have of each game, um, that also helps as well. But yeah, the girls over here are very physical. And um, we've kind of, this year, I suppose, we... Put more of an emphasis on our S and C because we knew coming here this year that um, we need to be stronger. So um, yeah, we're we're enjoying it now. I think it's fairly common theme across the board that all the players are getting better game on game. It goes without saying, you know, every game you have is a bit more experience. Every season you have, um, you are due to go back again next year on a two-year contract, I think, and are among the few art fairs that have that arrangement. Um, I suppose that's an interesting development in that it gives you a little bit of security and a little bit of forward planning on how your next couple of years are, are going to play out and stuff. Is that good to have that locked down and kind of know that even if you're coming back now to me on the summer that you're potentially going back out again uh, next winter? COVID dependent, of course, after what's happened this year, but it, it's got to be a bit of comfort to know that your immediate plans are kind of sorted. Yeah, definitely. It's good to have the kind of security there and to have like a plan in place. So, you know, like we will go home and play the Gaelic season with Mayo um, and then come back again next year. But it's good to have that plan in our heads um, and to plan in advance too. So the three of us will be back out again next year, which is good. Um, and again, we'll be able to hopefully build on everything we've learned so far. But um, yeah, it is good. It's it's great that we can fit in the Gaelic and the AFL. So that was definitely something that like enticed us to sign the two year um, contract as well so um, but yeah as you said it's, it's really good we feel a lot comfortable knowing that uh, we have a plan in place and that we are coming back out next year You touched on uh, the sort of strength and conditioning side in between your sort of first and second year what else was a focus to get you ready for the for your second season and I guess heading into your third as well potentially over the summer I know you spent a bit of time with Mike and, and a bit of coaching with him over the summer so just what were you sort of focusing on the summer just gone to, to get yourself ready for this season? Yeah, during the lockdown, I suppose we had so much time to uh, do loads of stuff to get better. So um, our skills really, and we were very lucky that we had each other to practice with, to kick pass to and kick with both feet and hand pass with both hands as well and tackle to the floor as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely the skills. Um, I think we even here in the house when we're not training, like every day we'd be doing a little bit. So I think it's really important to keep on top of that as well. So that was definitely another area where uh, we worked. Yeah. We worked and then it was really good then to have them coaching sessions with Mike then just to, to freshen up on our skills because you can be doing it as much as you want out in the backyard. But I think yeah. when you actually go and like we could meet Ash then as well and Mike and the four of us were able to do um, a session there so it was actually really good to, to get that in before going to Australia so um, yeah a lot of the girls uh, went for sessions with Mike actually as well before yeah. they went over so um, that definitely helped us all before brushing up and before coming out and playing. We were obviously delighted to be able to work with you and work with Eagles for those sessions 
before you had it out. Um, one of the ones we had in UL at Limerick was the first time you had a kick with Ash, I think, uh, and the yeah. two in their strip and stuff. So that was pretty exciting. Um, in terms of, I know you're all living together and uh, off the pitch, but your your link of play on the pitch is, is incredible, as we've mentioned there already. Um, we're seeing lovely um, videos from an amazing apartment with views of the, <laughs> the river or whatever behind you. How did you swing that one? <laughs> Um, we were actually living in a different place when we first got here, but um, our lease was up, so we had to go and uh, move to a different place. So we started looking around and, yeah, we liked the look of this one. So, yeah, the club were really uh, helpful as well with source of the place too. So, yeah, the club definitely helped us um, get it as well. So um, they do so much for us, like on the pitch, but also off the pitch as well. So, um, yeah, we really feel like we're at home here and we don't have like to worry about those kind of things so um yeah they were really good at sourcing it for us and yeah we're delighted to have ash living with us this year just another irish head uh, around the place and even her knowledge of the game as well like she's an extra year uh, playing aflw so we we learned so much from her like even watching the other irish girls playing we'd be analyzing the games and stuff so we're learning all the time um and she's just she's a gym around the place as well <laughs> This is probably a, a double sort of question, I guess. I did hear that prior to making the move, you had interest from other clubs. So I was going to ask, what was the what was the attraction to the West Coast, and, and why did you choose the Eagles? But also, did when when Ash was making a move from the Bulldogs, was she in touch with you guys as well? Yeah. So when we first got in touch with those, it was four different clubs that we got in touch with. But um, our first, all the clubs were lovely. But um, the first call that we had with West Coast Eagles, they were just they're very like um, welcome and approachable and just the way they, the kind sold of, the club. they sold like even Perth and everything kind of outside of the football club as well to make us feel comfortable here. Um, we were, you know, really attracted to that. So um, we built a really good relationship with, uh, it was Adam and Luke we were chatting to first from the club. Um, and then, yeah, they, we just kind of had a lot of conversations with them then and it kind of went from there. But um, then when Ash uh, got onto us last year, yeah, she, we had one or two conversations with her um, before she finalised her decision to move over from Bulldogs. But um, she had a great two years at Bulldogs. Um, we actually came up against them last year uh, here and she stayed an extra day and we actually, we showed her around Perth yeah. that day. But at that stage, showed her all the good spots. we had no <laughs> idea she'd be here a um, couple of years time. So... Um, yeah, it's it's been it's really cool having Ash here now with us. And of course, we've got Anya Ty there as well. And I know the three of you are ganging up and poor, poor Anya a little bit over at the doctors there. <laughs> uh, it's three against one, and, and there's a good healthy rivalry there between the clubs. And we're we were chatting to Anya a couple of weeks ago, and we're really hoping we get to see her before the end of the season. Uh, fingers crossed in some capacity. Um, do you guys get to meet up um, outside of the football? And I suppose to touch on what um, Jim said there, then Perth as a city, what's that like to live in? And uh, what would it compare to here at home in terms of size-wise and, uh, and that? Yeah, we do. We meet up with Anya a good bit as well, um, just for lunch or breakfast and just catch up on how she's getting on with her rehab and everything like that. Um, so that was good. And we actually spent Christmas with her as well. So she came over to our place and... Actually, Aileen Gilroy um, spent it with us as well because she was just out of quarantine in Perth. Um, so we had a great Christmas with with the Irish gang as well. So we tried to make an Irish Christmas out of it, but uh, we didn't food poison them anyway. So <laughs> it <was> all good. <laughs> um, but yeah, Perth City is lovely. Like even meeting up with Anya, there's loads of activities we can do, um, like loads of markets. I suppose the weather is just, it's gorgeous. So there's a lot of outdoor food markets and um, we can go to the beach um, and there's loads of parks as well. So there's always like different events on too and outdoor cinemas and stuff like that. So um, yeah, we're very lucky um, even with COVID as well in WA, there, there's no cases here at the minute. So we realise how lucky we are here um, and uh, yeah, we're really enjoying it. We touched on earlier again, it's the season seems to have flown by. It's just two weeks ago. So what's, I guess, you know, finals are not this year for you guys, but what's your sort of goals for the last couple of games and what do you want to get out of it as a individuals and as a club? 
Yeah, so we've two games left. We've Richmond next weekend in Melbourne. So we've only got a six day turnaround. So we're conscious of that. So I suppose recovery will be a big thing this week. And then we have um, our last game at home here against St Kilda's. So um, I suppose our biggest thing is just build on everything we've been learning this year. And if we can play by our trademark and, and work hard um, and kind of play like we did today, kind of like play for the four quarters. Um, so, yeah, I suppose it'd be great to get two more wins to finish off the season. But, um, yeah, we'll just we'll keep building one game at a time anyways. So if we have Richmond next weekend. So hopefully that goes goes well for us. Yeah, I think our first few games, we've had great like first quarter efforts and um, like kind of slowing down then in the second, third quarter and then kind of coming back for the fourth quarter. So that's what we were really happy with today. More so than the result really is just that we we came out for four quarters and we gave the same amount of effort for each quarter. So that's what we'll be kind of focusing on for the last two games. And it's exciting to have a couple more games left in a slightly extended season. There's, we touched on it with all the players. There's huge buzz here at home um, with the games being shown on TG Car. Um, two games every weekend now, full, fully deferred. Highlight show every Monday night with all seven matches. Um, it's fantastic for us here at the AFL Women's and the, the game has been exposed to so many more people. We're getting numerous inquiries from all ages of players and it's brilliant. Um, are you guys picking up on, on some of that feedback out there and, and getting some comments from home um, on, where people who are seeing the game for the first time or people maybe who have been supporting you for a couple of seasons without really knowing what's going on but now they can actually sit down and watch a game and try to figure out how it all works. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I think it's so good that like TG Cahu have um, came on board this year and you know they're showing games every weekend. Um, and definitely there's a lot more interest for people at home. So um, it's really good because like it's great to have people at home like tuning in and knowing what we're at out here and that we actually are playing football. So <laughs> um, no, it is really good to have um, people tuning in and uh, there's definitely a lot more people, I suppose. Yeah, you know, there, when you compare it to last year, there's definitely yeah. more people like texting us before games and like Le can't wait to watch the game at the weekend and they're kind um, of learning the rules of the game kind of as each game goes by as well so a lot of people kind of know more about the game which is good this year too so that's awesome it's great to hear the, the love of the game is spreading around just the last one from me when the season's done in a couple of weeks and are you going to race back and get ready for the gas season or are you going to take a bit of, bit of bit of time off and maybe relax in Perth for a while before you come home yeah, I suppose with the COVID situation at home, um, we're not really sure when the gas season is actually starting or when they're going back training. So we'll keep an eye on the our group chat and um, see um, when they'll be back training. So if there's time to do a bit of travelling, even around Western Australia for a week or two weeks um, after the season, we'll do it. Um, but yeah, as soon as we hear there's GEA happening, we'll be on a flight home. <laughs> Perfect, guys. Well, thank you so much for your time today. It's been a pleasure chatting to you. Good luck for the, the remainder of the season. Two games to go. Hopefully two more wins for the Eagles and you can come home and really look forward to your third season next year. I'm sure it'll come around so quickly, but thanks again for your time. Thanks, thanks. so much. Great chat to you. Thanks very much thanks for having us.